Welcome to Vision Pros, the show all about spatial computing, Vision OS, and getting work done on the Apple Vision Pro. I'm Tim Chen, host of the show. If you long press on the volume, it's so annoying. It's it's so there's a meter, right? A left to right meter to raise or lower the volume. Look at it, grab it and hold it, and it'll bring up an options menu to let you turn off the head track and do a fixed track where that way you can have the audio surround you even if you're facing away from the app itself, which is handy. Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Vision Pros. The day is finally here. Apple has released the Apple Vision Pro and Vision OS 1 to the world. And in this episode, we are joined by Wes Hilliard from Apple Insider. This episode was recorded on Sunday, February 4th. Both of us picked up our headsets on Friday morning of release, February 2nd, 2024, giving us a little more than 72 hours with the device at the time of this recording. So it goes without saying that these are all very fresh thoughts and many, many more thoughts will be coming in future episodes. There is so much to cover and we just didn't have time to dive into everything. And we are also discovering new apps and OS features daily. One cool thing I didn't have the chance to share in the episode is how much I love the notification system of where a little app icon shows up in the top of your view. And if you look at it, you can tap and expand it. And then you can look through the notification center up in control center. And that's really well designed as well. Another thing I've been reflecting on is that this is one of the few devices that I use with full system audio enabled. No muting of notification sounds or anything like that, which I do on the watch and iPad and iPhone where everything's pretty much just muted. The audio experience here is so personal and well-designed that I can't imagine using it muted like I do my Apple Watch or iPhone. And you're kind of living in your own little soundscape with the audio pods or AirPods, and it just feels so natural and kind of just part of the OS in a way that it doesn't in other operating systems. Uh, which is kind of cool. And something that I have noticed also is it can be pretty handy to have personal notification sounds for individuals. So if you have a person where you get a text from that person, it can make a very custom sound for them that you know by seeing a messages notification come in, you know, hey, it's that person because that sound is coming in, which is something I've been taking advantage of as well. So with that said, welcome to the era of spatial computing, Vision OS, and the Apple Vision Pro. Episodes will be coming out more frequently now, and I'm excited to bring on more and more guests covering how we are using the Apple Vision Pro, the new apps launching for Vision OS, and everything spatial computing. If you want to support this podcast, head on over to visionpros.fm slash Patreon. From there, you can subscribe to the Patreon or subscribe to the podcast in Apple Podcast. By supporting the podcast, you'll get episodes early and have my sincere thanks for your support. You'll also get early access to the iPad Pros podcast for supporting Vision Pros. My thanks to everyone that currently or has in the past supported the show. This episode was recorded with Personas using StreamYard in Safari on Vision OS. If you would like to watch what that looked like, you can head on over to youtube.com slash at iPad Pros podcast where the core unedited interview is. We did each record our audio on local separate mics, which you'll hear in this audio version of the podcast. The video version, we used AirPod Pros to capture our audio, so you can hear the difference there if you are curious. With that said, here's my discussion with Wes all about our first 72 hours with Apple Vision Pro. Enjoy. Hey, Wes. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, this uh, very strange, like alien version of ourselves talking to each other yeah so we're in um stream yard if you go to the youtube version youtube channel um youtube.com slash at ipad pros podcast because it's still linked to that other show as well um you can see the persona version over stream yard which is um it's something uh the it's... eye looking where my eyes are going are a bit weird but uh if i like really emote i can get it to do things it's like i'm like pushing uh, Play-Doh around or something. Like it's like I need to get to the really extreme levels of my expressiveness to get to really emote because otherwise I look kind of robotic, almost emotionless. 
And I noticed that, yeah, that capture around my eyes, like I, maybe when I'm doing the Persona recording, I need to open my eyes really wide because they appear to be almost closed a lot of yeah, the that's, time. Like that's my new thing. Like my um, neutral face, if I sit here and relax on my muscles, my eyelids look like they're just hovering in the middle of my pupil. <laughs> right. But I think it, people give Personas a lot of crap. Um, I'm impressed with it. Like it looks sort of like pretty much like me. I mean... And this is version one beta, and um, I, I think ever, it's a good start. What what kind of – do you video game – play video games at yeah, all? Yeah, this is way better than NBA 2K or any other, other Avatar so, things. <laughs> it's giving me Heavy Rain vibes. Like PlayStation oh, yes. 3, back when – all right, so if anyone doesn't know, go look up uh, just a video, a YouTube video of Heavy Rain. And it's so funny because it's one of those games that was very ahead of its time, and – um oh my mac screen disappeared again and i now no longer know if i'm recording this is this is excellent i love this oh it came back it's like is it doing that um reconnecting thing it's not reconnecting it's i think my macbook screen like it's going to sleep because i don't have it connected to power maybe i should connect it to power anyway uh technicalities discussing during a podcast on the podcast um so (laughs) what i was saying is heavy rain was always funny because it, they did the face capture stuff. It was too early for it. PlayStation 3 just could not handle it very well. People's pores really were pronounced. Uh, their facial expressions were very wide and their mouths moved because, again, they were using face capture like mocap uh, for the actors. But like everything felt less real and it got really close to what, uh, what's that word? Um, Uncanny Valley to the point where. You're like, I'm looking at a human being, but they look like claymation versions of themselves. And I I feel like that's where Persona is. It's like, it's better than a lot of modern video games. It's definitely better, more customizable because it's literally capturing your facial facial features. Right. But it's like, it's a little odd. Yeah. And I wish we could change clothing and maybe save multiple Personas to have a change of clothing, depending. (laughs) Yeah. Like, you're... I it looks like you captured yours in a hoodie, maybe. Yes, I was a, in a hoodie, and I gotta say, hoodie is great if you're lounging around in your house and want to plug and walk around a bunch. Plug in a big battery, put the big battery in your hoodie pocket, and leave then your Apple Vision Pro battery in your just normal pants pockets. Great combo. Yeah. But I feel like we got off on a tangent right away. Because <laughs> we did, yes. Yeah. So these um, personas are so distracting. <laughs> yes. Anyways, um, welcome to Vision Pros. And uh, last time we had a podcast was about a month ago. We were speculating what Apple would share in the keynote announcing the final details of Apple Vision Pro. That didn't happen. We got a press release. Apple Vision Pro was uh, released on February second. We were recording this on the Sunday, February. Fourth, fifth. <laughs> what day is it, Wes? Uh, <laughs> February fourth, Sunday. That's all I know. I'm... Yeah, Sunday, February fourth. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, we've had a couple days uh, with the headset. Um, uh, Wes is in the process of reviewing it for Apple Insider. Um, it's been a whirlwind. Um, yeah. Um, I guess to start, how was your Apple Store pickup experience, and what all did you get? Really good. Um, it went smoothly. It was. Uh, I actually have a story on Apple Insider about um, the pickup experience, and it was it was so quiet because it's Nashville. Uh, it was kind of cold that morning. I don't think that many people knew that the store was opening at eight instead of ten. So seven thirty, nobody there. It was uh, too cold. So we went and got coffee. Came back ten minutes till. I took some photos. I you know made a few posts. You might have saw me on Twitter uh, with some images that day. And then finally, as if all of a sudden, about 10 people showed up and then a few more (laughs) and then the doors opened. So like as people were showing up and really starting to gather, the doors came open and we all just funneled in and grabbed an Apple employee. And I was just like, I am way early. My thing isn't till nine. And they pretty much just said, it's fine. And just sat me down, signed me up for a demo. I was that Apple employee's uh, first demo of the day. Uh, I think her name was Jenna, uh, and she was amazing. And she's just, she was just like really ecstatic. Is like, okay, you got to bear with me. I've never done this yet. This is so odd. This is so different. And um, yeah, it was it was a good time going through the demo. If 
uh, you did you do the demo in store or anything? Or did you get your delivered? Yes, okay. I did. Yep, I was eight a.m. Uh, Mall New Hampshire store. Um, me, uh, Christian uh, from Apollo was there uh, with me for our eight a.m. pickups, which was fun. Um, and yeah, it was his first time through. Uh, they were confused about the Q- the QR code thing for the lenses, um, but they figured that out and got it all squared away. Because if you don't scan that code, uh, eye tracking just basically doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. So my lenses got delivered home to I'm I'm I live in Kingsport, Tennessee, which is about four hours away from Nashville. I just wanted a a special kind of pickup experience, so I wanted to go to the big fancy one in Nashville. My lenses got delivered while I was picking up my Vision Pro, but luckily I can see okay without glasses. So and I gotta I say, to- compared the PSVR two and other headsets, much more easy to read stuff even with l- not great vision inside that thing for me at least. Text was a bit tricky, but um, uh, yeah, I could do it um, without them. I, I I did the initial setup without the lenses, and then UPS showed up halfway through it and reset and started over again. But I was impressed with just the visual optics of it with uh, no glasses in there. Yeah, I, I felt like I, I knew putting it on, okay, I this is going to be better with glasses. I'm going to have to wait for, sure. for the glasses. and. I was able to mess with it. The hotel Wi-Fi was awful. Vision Pro really needs internet. I mean, especially during first setup. There's so much you just need to download and do. But getting it for the first time, setting it up, it all just worked. Uh, We were discussing before. I've been solo looping it this whole time. It fits. I think it fits me best. I don't know what it is about my head shape, but like I put on the dual band was not comfortable did not enjoy that interesting yeah i've been bouncing back and forth trying to get a feel for both of them at times the soul loop's comfortable but other times it's not i guess it depends on like how high put the headset and the back part of the band how high that is um overall i i think the dual loop is where i'll do a lot longer sessions and most of the time but not all the time if that makes I sense i think uh, when putting on the solo loop what i noticed is it's going to feel higher than it looks. I put like it, I, it feels like it's on the crown of my head, uh, with it on. But when I took like a fi- a photo, it's actually looks like it's sitting straight back. So like the feeling, cause you're not going to be able to see the back of your head when you put it on. No. So the, so the feeling of where it's resting, I feel like is important because you need to get a good feel for when you're now it's second nature to me. I, when I put it on, I know exactly where to put it. I tighten the, um, little crown thing to uh, get it to the right pressure and it lifts it up off of my nose, my bridge. It's still got some weight on my cheeks. Most of the weights on my forehead and the rest of the pressure is in the headband itself. And it just feels so much nicer. When I did the dual band, I tightened it to different levels, but no matter what I did, it felt like I had six different pressure points. Like there was a lot of weight on the top of the band. There was weight on each side of the back band that was going around the back of my head. And then um, there was weight on my face still. And it was just like, there's, it it just felt like I'm just wearing this really heavy hat almost. I kind of want a combination of both of them. (laughs) Cause I overall like the solo thing, but sometimes I feel like I need the top part. I think if Apple could do a solo loop, where you tighten it, even if it's two knobs, one on one knob on each side. Let me tighten the back and the top loop with the little knob thing. It gives you yeah, so yeah. much more granular the Velcro control. Is such, I'm getting hair stuck in that Velcro thing. It's yeah, it's not ideal. Yeah, I I do love the travel case because you can throw the band you're not using inside the little pouch just fine. Um, the battery thing's very well thought out. Um, it just it just all it's a very quality thing and smaller than I thought it would be based on the pictures. Like, I was expecting it to be even bigger than it is. It's not a small case, but it's not, like... The case... I, I have uh, the Nomadic backpacks, um, the black ones, if anyone's ever seen those. They're pretty slim. They're for, like, putting an iPad or a laptop in and a couple of chargers and accessories. And the uh, travel case for the Vision Pro is definitely thicker than my backpack. Like, it, it wouldn't go in one of my nomadic bags. Yeah. Like, if I'm carrying this thing, it's either going in a suitcase or I'm carrying it separately. Like, right. it's big enough. But yeah. you're right. Like, it's not as big as I maybe initially thought. What I really want, I think, is a backpack-style bag or a sling bag that has a pocket for keeping the Vision Pro and 
than everything else built around it. I think Waterfield Designs is working on a backpack version of just what you're saying. Yeah, that would be perfect. Um, yeah. And so I got the one terabyte model because why not? And I, I'm curious, Wes, have you looked at your data usage so far? So currently I'm using 149 gigabytes um, of use, 14 gigs with photos, six of music, and then the OS is taking up 12. System data, 79 gigabytes, a whole bunch of caches and logs and other resources the system deems to need. So um, that's where I'm at currently, um, and I'm, I'm sure it'll go up from there. I did a test with Avatar 2 on um, the iPhone and iPad. It's a 3 gigabyte download for 2D on Vision OS. It's double that at around 6 gigabytes, and for the 3D version of Vision OS, it's around 13 so it like doubles each time. So the Apple's definitely letting you download uh, higher resolution versions on Vision OS, which is good because I think um, they limit it to like 1080p on iOS for downloads. But it seems like they don't want you to have a terrible looking movie, <laughs> uh, which you'll notice more on Vision OS. So it's good that they're giving you basically double the file size and um, triple that if you go with 3D. Um, how many apps do you have installed? Uh, about applications. I got a. Exactly a hundred apps, Wes. Exactly. Nice. I don't know how um, I land on that. Yeah, I'm not. I haven't gone app crazy yet. I'm at 32 apps. I think. Okay. Uh, I've I've installed a few games. I've installed uh, a few apps I need for just productivity. I have the test flight for drafts because drafts is essential to my writing. I'm very um, jealous of that test flight, by the way. Uh, it's public. Go. You can go to drafts okay. uh, beta <laughs> web. They they actually have a website where it's like public beta, and you can click the test flight link from there. So anyone listening to this who who has a Vision Pro and wants to try it, it's a public beta. You can just go grab it. I was trying RuneStone, and it's just a delightful thing to have a text editor in Vision OS. Just it's it's nice. Drafts like, Drafts is still the iPad app, but I have it, it set is, to okay. the um, vertical mode. Yep. Yeah, it's not it's not an iPad app in the App Store yet. It only in Test Flight is the iPad app okay. available. And I, I do like with iPad apps that little vertical horizontal one. That's mm-hmm. super nice that that's in there. Yeah, imagine if you only had a vertical display dedicated to a single app, and it's kind of like that. Yeah, I do wish they let you do more size classes, though. Like, I want iPhone-sized little windows. The windows overall on Vision OS and the iPad apps, they seem like you can't get them super small. Like, I want some that are smaller, even. So you have more apps than I do, but I have more storage than you do. So I have 220 gigs on photos. I did download local save because I have 10,000 photos. I have less than a lot of people Um honestly uh but because i delete a lot of duplicates so i have 220 gigs in photos eight gigs in messages uh three gigs in music i've started downloading stuff like that but i have games and stuff like i downloaded like tamagotchi i downloaded a couple of the vr games in apple arcade um synth riders did you try synth riders i did i i enjoy it I okay. much prefer the PSVR 2 one with haptics. Like, it's something I do I do miss mm. that stuff. I noticed that, yeah, any time you're going to play a VR game on Vision Pro, like Synth Riders, it's an immediate noticeable feeling that you don't have the haptics. Like, your hands are just kind of waving in the empty air. And, yeah, you can see that, like, there's little icons on it. And, like, I know it, when inevitably Beat Saber comes to Vision Pro, unless Facebook just decides not to. Um, right. It... I have a feeling they're going to put the sabers in your hands and you're going to swipe through the air, but yeah, just no haptics. I, I hope that Apple opens this up and, uh, you know, I, like, cause the hardware is capable. So it'd be a, it, this would be an OS thing, but Apple needs to open up the OS for generic VR controllers. Let, let Absolutely. these, let steel series make a VR controller with haptic feedback that we can buy to play these games. Don't require it, you know, don't do anything weird, but let developers target that and actually give us some responses. Yeah. And, uh, the one VR game, Jetpack Joyride 2, um, felt great. Um, and it's, it's, most of these are spatial games. This is more of a, a VR game where you're in an entire immersive space. All you see are your hands and you're in just this delightful little desk setup, and um, you I know, think the it's, game's playing on a flat screen. It, it's pretty neat. I think it's the only like fully VR uh, version, because right. everything else is mostly like you said, the immersive windows. Um, if you could imagine an AR version of what the golf, that's basically what they did, is just put the golf levels in a augmented reality. You can just see the hill that the guy's standing on, and then you kind of use your fingers as the putter uh, to pull back the yeah. 
force meter and the, I can't play the game that way. I feel like it no. that 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 game's better for like I like that they made the attempt, but they need to bring you know what the bat to um, Vis- Vision OS, uh, which maybe they will. But yeah. um, there aren't any third party games yet in the App Store as we and record. I guess in the the App Store you just have to search for games to find games. There's no like let me browse by category. You have the front page of the featured stuff. And you have Search in Apple Arcade. Uh, yeah. They really need to add some way to browse all of the apps because there's probably a bunch of apps. You won't find them unless you're searching for some term that brings search. it up. Yeah, it's there's so not weird. enough There's not enough categories. There's not enough delineation in the app store yet. But there's also not that many apps. But, but you can't even browse by category, I don't think. Yeah, there's no categories, no. Yeah, it's you have so to. Weird. You have to search for a word. Now, if they're featuring a category, right now there's a featured category called productivity. There's four apps in it. It's silly. Right. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, again, none of these are really jabs at Vision Pro. This uh, We literally are the first adopters of a new operating system. Uh, this lit- As you listen to this, even, it, it's probably in- increased by tenfold, right? We're, yes. We, there was 500, what, what was it, 600 at launch? Yeah, we're probably that- at 1,000, I think, now. Yeah, it's increased even then, and then by uh, another week from now, because I think someone was uh, saying on Mastodon, it's like no one's getting any responses right now from App Review, uh, so they probably took the weekend off. So um, even like a weekend of this, we're going to see double, triple the number of apps, and many of them native. But then yeah. there's apps like Drafts. I was speaking to, um, I think it's Greg Pierce, uh, who makes the app, uh, and he says he plans on making a... Um, full-on Vision Pro native app, it, but it's going to be a process. Apparently, it's not a simple app to port over. And um, I, and using that app specifically, like there's other iPad apps, of course, you can use, but this is the one I've used the most. It's very different. So think of it like a Mac paradigm. Um, we're always saying, don't bring touch to Mac because the touch targets would be too small, Right. Yeah. And, uh, so iPad OS has these giant buttons and giant touch targets everywhere. So you can reach down and tap them or use the, uh, new, the <laughs> new 2018, uh, virtual mouse, um, to select them. But in vision OS, you need even larger touch targets, which with even larger dead zones around each button, because your eyes are precise at where they're looking. But if there's six buttons in a specific spot, I find myself having to aim with my head like focus where (laughs) the button is and then like move until the parallax is on the correct button and then click. Yeah. That's uh, where sometimes the trackpad's handy. Yeah. Trackpad definitely Um, helps. Yeah. One thing I do wish um, is there's no way in the messages app to see where someone is in the find my, like there's no find my integration. Like it's just missing some, like there's no find my app. There's no find my app either. Yeah. Yeah. It's just gone. And then control center. I'm finding once I got a hang of it, I'm, finding that actually pretty nice for adjusting the volume versus the digital crown method did you um, notice much... the environments have sound i did yeah mm-hmm. and you can adjust how high those are as well now and i also noticed environments there's a couple that are like coming soon so we have some already pre-announced ones that are coming soon which is cool i did notice um a trick to try if you haven't yet uh i like that the music player and podcasts um, are head tracked. So wherever you put the window is, it sounds like that's the direction of the audio. And if you face right. the music, it puts, it centers it around your head. You can disable that. Uh, if you long press on the volume, it's so annoying. It's, it's, so there's a meter, right? A left to right meter to raise or lower the volume, look at it, grab it and hold it. And it'll bring up an options menu to let you turn off the head tracked and do a fixed track where that way you can have the audio surround you even if you're facing away from the app itself, which is handy. Interesting. Um, and something about the, I guess, um, the battery life, uh, this thing will drain external battery packs. I was using the biggest Anchor 27,000 pack, and within like three hours, it killed the full the whole thing. I think part of that was ch- it was also charging the nearly dead Apple Vision Pro battery, I want to do another test where the Vision Pro is at 100% and see if that rate's different, because I think it might be. Right. I think there, there's a reason behind that, and I'm a bit rusty. I mean, if, if you guys, if listeners didn't know, I was formerly an electrician, and um, 
something to keep in mind is voltages are very important. Now, while um, Vision Pro has a, uh, you know, 3, it's only 3,000 milliamps, 3,000 yeah. milliamps, but it's voltage. I'm trying to find it in my review. Um, it's a dense, it's a dense. Uh, yeah, 3, it's a, well, it's a 35 watt hour battery. So what, yeah. wor- whatever that math works out to the voltage, I think it's, it's, it's actually pretty high. Um, so I am glad that a 30 watt wall charger does the job because like we don't, I was I was anticipating oh maybe this is like going to be a crazy 65 watt crazy adapter we need. Yeah, it'll keep it floated or alternatively if you want to walk around without any battery packs, you can um then easily uh walk around and t- do whatever you're going to do with Vision Pro until it's at like 10 per- 20% and then go to your fast charger get like a 60 70 watt charger which is the max wattage of an ipad 2 which is funny i think it's but it, that, i think that's the highest you can get to a vision pro and it'll charge it faster than the 30 watt will but okay. you know yeah. attaching 100 watts uh, there, there is a limit i think it's around right. 60 once you hit about 60 that's the fastest it'll go but then you'll get double the speed than the 30 watt so you can actually beef that up quite a bit have you tr- i couldn't get universal clipboard to work between ipad and vision pro is that not working right now. Have you tried that? Today? I'm. I've been using Universal Clipboard fine. Okay. Uh, between I, I haven't used it with the iPad yet. Um, just the iPhone. I know the this, Mac. It works well with. Yeah, I use it with the iPhone. Um, I don't. I'm not going to be using this with my iPad because it, they don't have that second screen experience, and I don't think they ever will because I, it relies, I believe, on uh, the Universal Control uh, APIs to do that window and i know it's screen sharing but because universal control is controlled from a mac um, i believe the mac's doing the heavy lifting on that end and the ipad just you can't start a universal control from an ipad yeah i was trying to copy a password and then one password is there and i know there's an app for one password on (laughs) vision os i need to get that set up and configured um, but this really is inspiring me to move to icloud keychain because it's just such a it's such a pleasant experience with the optic id and it's such a delightful like unlocking of a safe type experience keychain is a lot better these days i mean i used to be all in on one password and it's actually been a while um maybe two years now but i moved over fully to keychain and haven't looked back but and and now you can do shared passwords and everything and it's it's nice something really cool is um with text selecting with your hands like someone sent me a promo code and i was able to look at the promo code double tap to copy it it like did the accuracy there was just interesting, and I know um, you've been probably doing some tech selection with your hands doing this review. So, so many cool things here. Uh, first of all, it, anyone who's used a Mac or an iPad with a trackpad um, knows that if you double tap, you select the word. If you triple tap, you select the paragraph. That doesn't work in Vision OS as well. You can only do double tap to select the word. A uh, triple tap doesn't select the paragraph, but the word gets surrounded on either side by grabbers and you can look at either grabber then pinch to grab the grabber and then move the text selection left or right or if you double tap and just hold on the second tap you can move up or down to select the text around it so there's a lot of uh, nuanced controls in that uh, that are actually pretty straightforward but again just like with small buttons text can be small and it, if you've put the cursor in a place near a word you're trying to select it's going to think you're trying to look at that cursor not a different word so you kind of have to juggle the cursor around like move it to a different paragraph then look back at the word you're wanting to select and then try to select it uh, to try and trick the system into looking at the correct word but i've been doing a lot of text selection and stuff i've been i'm, I'm writing my review in vision os and drafts um, I'm able to select text and then use the link tool that I, it's an action is what drafts calls it, uh, to, to put a link around some text and that works, but, uh, drafts actions that relies on shortcuts, which launch the shortcuts app, run a shortcut, do a one second delay within that, and then send it back to drafts, uh, crashes everything. So, um, that's not a drafts issue. I think that's a shortcuts issue. I think that's actually yeah, shortcuts, a, um, I noticed you can't have any clipboard sh- commands in the shortcuts on Vision OS. It's so weird. Like, there is a clipboard on Vision OS, but you can't have shortcuts that tap into that. I think that's what breaks everything. That and I have a one-second delay on a lot of these actions because it need- drafts needs a second to yeah, wait. Yeah, there's no, like, wait to return or any of that stuff either, mm-hmm. which I-, I hope they add that with the next update. Yeah. 
all all very early days. Yeah, something I love, and I didn't know about this in advance, is I thought I'd have to be in environments all day long because my house isn't, um, you know, super high ceilings and spaciousness. Um, but instead, it kind of like makes your walls. I don't know how to describe it. It, it. it erases like the walls a bit, where you can have windows further back, and you can see that there's walls. But how, how can you better describe this, Wes? Where you if- can. <laughs> If you grab a window and put it behind a wall, it'll turn transparent once it passes through a physical object. And then when you let go, it remains at that size at that distance and becomes opaque again. So it's letting you know you've passed through a wall. Uh, So, right, if I'm in my office and I drop a window through the wall, technically speaking, in the physical space, it's in my kitchen. So if I walk out of my office and go in the kitchen, the window's actually in my kitchen (laughs) because... Uh, Vision OS actually has really good spatial awareness. But visually to you, it's kind of like the walls just kind of like a little transparent. And it's not that jarring. Like, I actually prefer to environments in many situations, which is Um, interesting. For me, uh, funny enough, I have a dog barking in the background at this part. Sorry, guys. Um, It'll hush in a second. (laughs) Someone's walking (laughs) in with groceries. Uh, Of course. Um, If it continues, I'll go get her but uh anyway the um i've noticed so in my house uh i have really dark walls and my room's kind of dim so the video pass through is great i mean it's still everything you know and you put the headset on you see the world around you it's great but especially in dim environments you're going to notice it's a it's a video as and the grain and the graininess increases as the light decreases so um and, and in my, pit, total pitch darkness, um, it works. It's challenging. Uh, you don't see anything, basically, when the lights are down. Um, it's worse than eyes from that perspective, even my crappy eyes. Um, but the IR illuminators are there. If your hands are, like, right under your head, you can pinch and it, do stuff. I've noticed um, it know. doesn't like that kind of environment, though. You're, the, no, it, the, the headset complains a lot. Yeah. It does. It pops up and says, you're near an object, but you're not, but it can't see that you're not near an object because it's lost all physical. Like, it really needs that uh, visual capability of the camera because I think, yes, it's using IR blasters, but that's mostly for the tracking. I think it's really relying on the video capture for determining space. And what I was getting at was, like, with the low, the dimness of my office, maybe I'll brighten it up in the future. That'd be fine. But, like, I've noticed that, honestly... Um, half cranking the immersive mode so i'm sitting you know at a lake or whatever Mm -hmm. in front of me but i can look down i can see my desk i can see my keyboard and that is awesome it's kind of like having a wallpaper on your desktop think of it that way right and then you turn your head and and there's my office you know and then i turn back and then there's the immersive environment the one thing i wish with like the apple tv environment and i think HBO does this too, is there's no dial with those. So Mm -hmm. like if I'm like, you know, have I, my daughter or whatever on my lap, I I can't use those because I, it cuts off all vision. Uh, I wish there was a dial on every environment, not just the built-in ones. Well, oh, so yeah, I actually haven't tried HBO or Disney plus yet. Funny enough. So I need to check that out. So those are probably fully immersive, like surround. Yeah. And the same as the Apple TV theater. Same. Right. You can't turn down the theater. No, uh, which is, I find weird to me. Have you watched, so this is tricky and no one explains it to you. I had to figure it out on my own because I, I remembered Apple's demo being like, you can do a 150 foot screen or whatever. And I was like, how do you get to that level? And you have to go into the immersive environments, go to theater mode, or you have to be at the lake one. I always forget which one that is. Uh, the one with the lake in night mode. And then it lets you, and then it becomes a movie theater. But when you do that, zooms the video all the way back to the water so it's being reflected into the water that might be distracting for some people so there's a reflection of whatever you're watching in the lake and now you're fully immersed only able to watch that no other apps open if you're in that view and if you try to go back to the uh normal video view the the video comes back to the shoreline and then you can open other apps and you're still immersed inside of that lake environment but you're no longer able to get you can't do both that's interesting. I need to try the lake thing because I've been just using the regular pass-through video with 
that and blowing up the screen super large, which the TV app, it lets you get it. It feels like 150 feet, like just blowing it up as you can really stretch it and like keep going and keep going where it's just like your entire field of view almost. It's definitely huge in that view um, and 3D movies really pop. But, but if it you feels have bigger it, in that uh, 150 mode. If you if you get to that lake mode, where, what I'm talking about, where it's nighttime at the lake uh, and it zooms out over the lake and it's reflecting in the water. That is incredible as an experience. It's, okay, uh, I'll try it tonight. Yeah. I've so far watched Avatar 1 and 2 in, in 4K 3D, and wow, that was uh, both incredible. Uh, uh, Avatar 1 reminded me of being back at the IMAX theater uh, when that came out as a kid. <laughs> Something to keep in mind. So some films are... F- some movies are filmed in 3D and some are converted later. Right. Uh, and James some Cameron, are computer generated like Pixar and Mario mm-hmm. where it's kind of like they can build in that between the two. Right. Yeah. Whenever they want. Yeah. They can just right, add yeah. it. So like James Cameron, he's notorious for shooting on the most expensive possible cameras you can buy. And so Avatar one and two were shot fully with actual 3D cameras. Yeah, so those... Hugo is another example. Martin Scorsese shot that in 3D. It was, it's an older film, so it might, it's an I older version of 3D it. too. Yeah, right. Yeah, but, but like the modern, like Way of the Water uh, Avatar is going to really, really pop versus say uh, Star Wars, right? Because right. like Star Wars is fully f- right, and it goes to high frame rate 3D with Avatar two as well, right? So some experiences are going to be different levels, uh, just, but they're all pretty cool. I, I watched Super Mario Bros, and that that was a lot of fun. Um, but I've been watching a lot of two D stuff too, and uh, that's been really nice. Yeah, I'm excited. Just th- let me rewatch the Lord of the Rings extended edition trilogy in two D, and <laughs> that'll be great. Um, are, are you going to watch the Hobbit in three D? <laughs> I I kind of want to see what that's like. I've never seen the high frame rate three D Hobbit, so let me. Yeah. They're terrible movies, but let me check it out. Yeah, I don't know why they did that, but that's a different conversation. Yeah. For sure. But I'm so, super impressed. And the immersive um, videos that Apple's done are super cool. The Alicia Keys thing, you can see the cameras in the shot and in, embedded into the speakers, which is kind of interesting. They don't seem super huge. Uh, I don't know. Did you do the uh, adventure one where she's walking over the uh, yes. cliff? Yes. That I one, love how she puts her shoes inside her jacket. It's like, what? Do you, what? <laughs> I think uh, what was really interesting about that one um, is th- the way they captured it. It really, if you, especially if you are one of those people who can't handle cliff edges, when they approach the cliff, especially for the first time, you can really feel your your brain kicking in and saying, "Don't walk over that cliff." Right. Like yeah. I got that like queasy feeling in my stomach of, oh gosh, this is we're we're because the depth is just really well done and the way they shoot it and the way that it, it's only like a fifteen minute experience, but it was it was a lot of fun and I'm excited to see more of these. Um the dinosaur one was really cool. The uh, experienced dinosaurs. I didn't I haven't watched Prehistoric Planet yet. I want to. Yeah, but, it's good. But experienced dinosaurs, have you done that app thing yet? I have. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. It's like get up and yeah. See the dinosaurs walking through. That one, I think people maybe no one really explained this one. It's a, it's kind of a short film, is what it is. Yeah, it's an interactive short film. Slightly it's, interactive, yeah. I think it's like six minutes. They really the only interactivity is it does uh, motion tracking. It just knows where you are in the room, so whatever dinosaurs on the screen at the time can look at you and, and kind of react to you. Will fly to you. Uh, and you can get the uh, Razasaur to snap at your finger if you get too close. Yeah. <laughs> um, but otherwise, yeah, it's just neat. Um, one thing I want to note here on the show, I don't even know if I'll put this in the review. I might. My house is old, and I live in Tennessee, so there's hills everywhere. So we're kind of on a hill. So the house I, is kind of slanting a certain direction. Um, <laughs> so one side of my living room is higher than the other by only a couple inches. It's not noticeable to the naked eye. But if you put a, a ruler down or whatever, you could tell. Um, I don't know what Vision Pro is doing to level everything, but like the dinosaur video, I noticed it uh, that one side of the video was higher off the ground than the other because it was level with the earth, I guess, and not level with my house. Yeah, I don't know what it was doing to figure that out, but yeah. One thing I wish you could do better is mount stuff to walls. It seems to just like, you have your windows, but it's not like... Let me let me put this picture on a wall. Like it doesn't seem to do that, really. 
Um, yeah, like, the interesting thing is, is the videos definitely, like, the, the Windows... Sorry, I'm talking away from the mic. I keep forgetting the microphone's in front of me. Um, yeah, yeah. So if you're listening to the podcast, my voice might drift a couple of times. Sorry about that, guys. Um, the Windows are very static. Wherever you put them, they stay there. They're, it's definitely the best physical location like I've seen in this kind of environment before. But it, you're right. You can't anchor it to an object. Um, and I think Apple did that on purpose. I I don't, I wish, all right, so one of the demos someone set up before they had a Vision Pro, because no one knew how this thing worked, no one, Apple wouldn't tell us, uh, Plant Daddy uh, wanted to set up a way to label your plants around the house, Yeah. and you could walk around and look at the plant, see the last time it was watered, and this little icon. Vision OS doesn't work that way. We wanted it to, and everyone was hopeful. Maybe you could, like, put light switches on the lamps that you could look at and poke, but and it's if, if you yank power, those will just get all wiped out, I think. Yeah, uh, all the windows disappear every time you power it off. Um, but also, <laughs> when you walk through a physical reality, if you're walking through a door into another room and turn around and look at windows you've left, like, in your office, they're still visible through yeah, the can, walls. Yeah, you can th- see through the ceilings. It's kind yeah. of... Uh... You can see through your objects. So, earlier, I went to do the 3D experiences in my living room, and I left all the stuff in my office. And it wasn't distracting. It wasn't like this weird thing nagging at me in the corner. But if I did face turn and face my office... There's the windows. Now, if I put a window in the living room over top of those, they're now obscured. So it's not like they're going to always be in the way or anything, but that is, that, that is something to keep in mind. Like Apple, at least right now, isn't using the walls to obscure the windows by design. That could change right. later. There might be a toggle for it. I don't know. Did you notice that there? if you press and hold on the window close button, you can hide other windows using that as yes, well? Yes, I did yeah. notice that. One thing I wish was better was multiple windows from the same app. You can do it in Safari. You can do it in Things 3 with, like, interface within the app. But there's no iPad system-wide thing to say, open another instance of this app. And right. if you ask Siri, it just opens the existing version of that app. That's something that I hope they add some way to do like iPad OS of open another instance of this app. So we're both, you know, what you'd call iPad pros. And when we picked up iPad, you know, and tried to make it into our primary computer, there was a lot of working through, okay, what workflows work, what workflows don't, what apps do I need to make this happen? And while vision OS is very heavily a iPad OS, like redesign almost, I think it requires a lot of rethinking. We're not going to be able to tile windows in the same way. We're not going to be able to have like something I would love to see in uh, vision OS is stages. I want to be able to have a set of windows in front of me. Like let's have Safari and drafts and you know, whatever in front of me. And then I can do perform a gesture or hit a button and switch to a different space with three other windows. That'd be very cool. You can't yeah. do that right now. I mean, and the another, big benefit, though, is you get unlimited windows. But you do get unlimited you do, windows. You do need to like do more management of, like, let me swap this one in. Yeah. You're really thinking about windows in a way that you don't on other devices. And another thing, there's just a lot of weird little features missing, which is just going to have to get baked in later. Focus modes don't have focus filters. <laughs> um, <laughs> Safari doesn't have tab groups. And if you have tab groups... You can't get to them. Uh, So, like, it's stuck in my personal tab group. I can't get to my work tabs. It's so funny. Am I missing something, or is there no way to create a new contact in Vision OS yet? Unless you use the card hop. There's no contacts app. There's a people section. And I hit the plus button, Wes. And Mm -hmm. what do you think a plus button in the people section would do logically? Probably add a person. (laughs) Uh, add a person, create a new contact, uh, but no, it creates a FaceTime link. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what that does. Yeah, I haven't tried that button. I, I think what's the people that show up there are your favorites. I haven't actually played around with that much yet because uh, not everyone shows up, and I, it, it seems to be a random list of people, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're my favorites. Um, yeah, it's interesting the people thing is there. It reminds me of the Apple Watch Gen 1 where you had the side button for people as a prominent thing. Now, to, to note, though, there's a lot of things in vision os that i want to see in other uh platforms um 
the people section is one of them. Get, contacts feels outdated as it is. Uh, you can add contacts on Vision OS. I just added you, Tim. Uh, when you texted me, I was able to add your uh, information. Oh, through the auto prompt. Through the prompt. But also, you can edit contacts inside of messages, which oh, is a kind okay. of an interesting thought. Do we need a contacts app if you can do that from other locations? Yeah. I do I like having a central to, source. So. Right. I was trying to add the things three email address that I just got up and running with into my contact book, but that was not uh, easy to do. <laughs> yeah. I'm not like, I feel like that, that is something they're going to add later, but maybe the person section could be right. uh, used for that. So one pro tip is make sure you have your Apple watch, uh, Bluetooth unlocking your iPhone. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in that world again where, uh, you know, mask unlock, uh, we had that added the face ID, but now let's re-enable that if you got a new watch, make sure that's enabled because that's really super handy. The other thing I noticed is um, prescription lenses. It's super, there's something in these lenses, like when you take them out and put them back in, it'll tell you which lenses you put back in. So I noticed when I put my lenses in, it told me the prescription of the lenses. So if you have a bunch of lenses that are unmarked, you can put them in, and it'll tell you what those lenses are in case you're confused, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So one thing I wanted to mention about display fidelity, uh, not a lot of people mention this or they mention it in a way that maybe isn't um, wholly intelligible at first glance. Uh, so have you noticed when you're in a dark environment? So not in pass-through mode. So you go to yeah. an environment, you go to dark mode, and you bring up Macedon or something and you're scrolling, text and white images while you're in a dark environment create reflections inside of the lenses. Have you noticed that? Yeah, it's not, It's maybe you haven't even looked for it, now I've ruined it for you, now you'll see it right. every time. But it's not like the end of the world. This is literal physics. Uh, the dark OLED, so we know what blooming is, right? So if you have an iPad Pro with mini LED backlighting, it's not quite OLED, so you're still getting blooming around white objects and black backgrounds think of this as the same way i think people refer to it as fringing maybe um mm -hmm. i just didn't know what that meant when they said fringing until i put it on i was like oh i would apply that word to that but around white objects and dark backgrounds you get this kind of like you're standing out in a field at night i guess and you look at your phone and you get that bright like aura around the phone of the light you know, it's kind of what's happening to these images, which I don't, it's not a bad thing. It's just something to note. Like, again, we're dealing with cameras feeding an image to a display inside of your face or on your face. And right. another thing I wanted to note about fidelity is not a lot of people mention it because I think it's kind of a given, but I, I guess people just need this to be said. You're wearing a mask over your eyes. The screens are inside of the mask. They, they're not the entire mask. The only way you, you would... So, like, your peripheral vision is always going to be these black, empty space. Like, you're wearing goggles. And if uh, you've never wore VR before, this might be a little jarring to you. But um, Or if you look all the way to your left or all the way to your right inside. So, like, if you keep your head steady and move your eyes to the edges of your eye... Like, your iris is the edge of your eyes. So, you're looking all the way to... to the, like. You can see like double vision because you're seeing the edge of the screen, basically. Right. Yeah. Uh, and but one, that's something one, I don't. Yeah. I mean, something as you're using it, you probably yeah. don't do. Yeah. These aren't ba these aren't criticisms. These are literally physics issues. There's the whole thing isn't a screen. You have one screen per eye. And the last thing I wanted to note for just people who just didn't know better. Um, well, no, never mind. <laughs> I lost yeah. that. But I was gonna say. Um, Everyone listening to this, notice that you have a nose. <laughs> Look down at your nose because mm -hmm. your brain, actually, it's a, it's part of, uh, I'm, everyone's probably heard this before, I'm just repeating old hat, you probably learned this in second grade, but your brain's always erasing your nose from your vision um, mm -hmm. because it's always in view. You don't you don't yeah. realize it psychologically. You're it's it's always there. You can't get away from it. It's part of your face. It's in front of your eyes. It is your nose is always in view, but your brain does this weird trick where it kind of just eliminates it, at least from your thought. So you don't perceive your nose until someone says, Hey, look at your nose. And suddenly, Oh yeah. Hey, it's in my face. Um, vision OS is kind of the same way or and other VR headsets, but just specific to what we're talking about here. The black 
area where you don't have peripheral vision, the fringing, the things around your eye, like all of these like weird artifacts of wearing a headset disappear into the background when you're focused on what you're doing in a way that, again, if someone says, hey, you're wearing a headset, you can see black around your uh, eyes. Oh, yeah, of course I can. But all of that kind of goes away. Just wanted to let y'all know there's a lot of like scare words um, around reviews and stuff with Vision OS. And I just wanted to clarify like, yes, that's a, that that's true. They are stating facts, but they're not negative things. They're just part of reality. And you kind of get away from it when you're using it. Yeah, well said. I mean, yeah, yeah. that is something that's being brought up in the reviews that that stuff exists. But yeah, and maybe it'll get uh, less of that effect one day as technology gets better. But uh, I, you know, it, it goes away as you use it. It really does. Um, something I'm surprised about, PSVR 2, I'm constantly needing to clean the lenses. Every single use, sometimes like mid-use, let me clean that sucker down. This headset, I'm using the um, the thinner light shield because it didn't recommend me use the thick one. I'm using the thinner one still. I haven't had to wipe the lenses once all weekend which I'm just impressed by. Have you had to wipe them down, or is this is this common, or is this just me? Um, I haven't. I haven't had any issues. Um, like when I before I had my inserts, I noticed that there must be like a fingerprint or something somewhere. So I, I wiped mm -hmm. them down. So I must have touched it by accident. But like since I've had my uh, inserts put in, yeah, nothing. No, I haven't had to wipe anything down. Um, there might be some kind of coating that just uh these are probably these are very expensive lenses yes. i th i think um other companies do let you do prescriptions but they're much cheaper i think in the range yeah, of like my 50, 50 bucks. ones from yeah. hans vr are probably uh, not quite as good optical. yeah like so glasses yeah glass is a funny thing like you, it, it can get really expensive really quick and whatever they've done to this to keep it from collecting uh grease and other things from your eyes and eyelashes like as you're wearing it they've done a great job here so yeah even even sony doesn't do this like you said in psvr and sony owns zeiss so it's yeah it's it's funny that um that might be a cost-cutting measure for other people but again we're dealing with apple so and i was impressed 150 for this quality uh, i'm very happy with what they came out price point for getting the lenses. Uh, I wanted to mention, so you say you have bad eyesight, but you were able to get a prescription fine. Um, you, or did you have to adjust I mean, yours? I, um, my eyes are pretty decent. Like, so in daylight, I really don't need glasses outside. It's just low light, low, low light. I'm very sensitive. Low light. That's when things get screwy for me. And if you're headsets, you are in pitch darkness. So you, it's always low. <laughs> so right. that's when I need it. So I'm at, I had negative four for each eye. Um, I was able to get the doctor to just give me because I don't. I hate prescriptions that where they give you different things for different eyes. You have a dominant eye. You're not supposed to correct for that, to my understanding. And the doctors like to do that, so I <laughs> thankfully was able to get them to match it and get rid of the astigmatism correction. Because that's another thing I, I just want a little bit more diopters to correct for that as well. I want simpler the better. So when I take off the headset, it it just that one variable that's changing versus all this other stuff. Um, if anyone listening tried to order vision OS and got basically told no, <laughs> because their yes. prescription was too high, go to your optometrist, let them know what you're doing. Many of them will know what to, they, they can adjust your prescription to get within the range. There are ranges. I don't know them off my head, but there is a higher yeah. limit. And if you basically, can get within that higher limit, for, you're good to go. See if they can adjust your prescription to, compensate for astigmatism with diopters because a little bit higher diopters will um, get rid of the astigmatism. That's a thing that happens uh, for most people. And um, I, I think I could do with even lesser prescription in this. I used a negative 3.25 at the store because they scanned whatever glasses I had with me. And that looks great as well. I think... Um, my negative, my two meter focal distance, I could have requested a little bit less and been yeah. fine. Oh, I just remembered the other fidelity things I wanted to bring up. Yeah, so, yeah. also, guys, by the way, this episode I think may be a little bit more free forming because we're Definitely. kind of just. We're, we're coming to terms with understanding this headset. It's hard to set a topic to. And how do you feel? <laughs> so, and, we um, and we still won't be able to cover everything that yes. we should because there's so much to talk about. If, um, if you have any specific questions for Tim, me, any, you know, just, of course, social media. But I, I digress. Uh, so the two things I wanted to mention. First of all, can you see light when you look down at your nose? 
like uh, a little ambient. Bit. Okay, so nobody mentioned this either. Oh, did I go away again? I keep you're grabbing here. this. I keep grabbing the screen. Yeah, you're um, here. And I know sometimes it's better or worse depending on that. There's a little fabric thing under your mm-hmm. nose, and I I don't know how to get that properly. Sometimes I think it just you're just got to let it lie again just like your nose being erased uh if there is light leakage down there you don't really ever look at it especially when you're in passenger no. mode because you're matching the light in the room but yeah, um i just sure. wanted to mention you you will probably see a little bit of light leakage down there and after initial setup the um <laughs> the eyepieces physically move with motors which is crazy and it can cause that fabric to pinch a little bit better around your nose so just keep that in mind um there are there is some light leakage at the base uh not something you really need to worry about, but I heard multiple people. I, I sat in the Apple store for like two hours and wrote a couple stories and mm-hmm. was listening to people set up their Vision Pro and go through the demo. And multiple pe- people commented, hey, does this fit right? Uh, I can see light at my nose. It's totally normal. Yeah, I asked like, what would a wrong fit feel like at the Apple store? Mm-hmm. And he said, you'd know it. It just, it'd feel wrong. And it's like, okay. Because yeah. like, I, 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 tried, I got the measurement that the phone told me, but it's like, do I try a bigger and smaller one just to see what it's like? But I did not end up doing that. And one one last thing, and I'll hush about these limitations. Um, when you're wearing the Vision Pro, and no matter how bright a room is, how dim a room is, whatever, color, light, and contrast are going to be different from reality. And the moment you take the headset off, you're going to be like, this room looks completely different from what I was seeing just now. Uh, I noticed that especially at the Apple store, it was this big glass building with sun coming through the room. I put the headset on and it actually did dim quite a bit because there was so much dynamic lighting going on with the sunlight that the cameras just can't capture it and the screen can't reproduce it in a way that human eyes can. Our contrast ratio for our eyes is maddeningly high. Uh, and technology just isn't there yet. So just something to keep in mind, like, again, that is totally normal. That is expected. And when you're in the headset, you don't, it's again, it's not something you notice. Maybe you look at a couch and it's blue and you take your headset off and it's even more saturated blue. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Like it's still a video pass through. Apple's ads make it look really great. And, uh, especially when it's the person walking around the room, looking at windows it's so hard to reproduce that in real life. So I recommend everyone go try one on, find a friend who has one, go to an Apple store to get the experience. If you're at all unsure you want this, because like I knew going in, I was going to buy this and use this and love it. But if you have any questions about how this feels or how this looks, you're going to need to try it for yourself. Another weird thing at times, the iPhone appears to have a big bubble. Like it, it's uh, warped a bit depending on how I'm looking at it. Not sure if you've uh, noticed that as well. Warping occurs on any headset because, again, cameras trying to reproduce an image. Warping occurs that, like, if you have a Quest 3, I wrote a story about a uh, study going into the psychological effects of wearing headsets for extended periods of time. And one of the things is distorted reality. And warping can occur in a couple of situations. One is when you hold something too close to your face. So... I have like a water bottle that has a lid that flips up. And then when I take a drink, (laughs) the lid covers the cameras and everything goes insane. (laughs) So um, (laughs) like, because it's so close to the thing, if you bring your hand really close to the screen, like it doesn't know how to compensate for your hands anymore. I'm like breaking the software displays in front of me, the walls trying to come through behind it. Like everything starts going kind of haywire because you're really messing with the cameras at that point. Or like if you, look at a a wall or a fence with a pattern and you take your hand and cover that and then move it across back and forth that pattern's going to like bubble up and move around your hands because the cameras are trying to compensate for the distance between your hand and the object that has a pattern and it yeah again cameras what can you do yes. like frame rate's not going to help that uh you know saturation contrast nothing will help with that because like it's just outside of our ability and technology so just and I will say <laughs> I, I did have lunch in the headset today, and that was I, – I could do it fine. I could – you know, I was cutting up a, you know, piece of meat and um, yep. everything. Motor I skills. Didn't hit, didn't hit the headset or anything. It was – everything lined up. Like, very enjoyable experience. Um, yeah. M- mentioning that um, story again, uh, so Stanford wore the – MetaQuest 3 for hours doing different things. They did physical sports, riding bikes and stuff, trying to see what 
the limitations of pass through were. And of course they didn't have a vision pro to do the study, so they couldn't check the differences. And I've been testing some of their things and it's different. So if you saw mm-hmm. MKHD, uh, MK, MKBHD. <laughs> Marques Brownlee. <laughs> exactly. Uh, if you saw his uh, review or his, I guess, um, unboxing and stuff, he said he yeah. played ping pong with the Vision Pro on because the latency and, and capture is so good on Vision Pro compared to other headsets, it, it makes it work. So um, uh, if you ever wore Vision, I'm sorry, if you wore Meta Quest or these other headsets like PSVR, motor skills are actually very difficult inside of these because they're just not as high quality cameras. The pass-through isn't as good. Um, Vision Pro, I've noticed distance judgment is good. I can reach out and grab objects. I know where they are in the room. Their physical distance is easy to judge. Yep. Other headsets, not so much. Um, and like the camera said- kind of lets you, if you're like looking for something, it, it's kind of aware you're looking for something and like, oh, it'll, um, you know, immersive you, stuff it'll take you out a little bit to do that. if you like accelerometer like if you activate it by moving or walking or standing everything kind of goes transparent to let you know where you are especially if you're in immersive spaces so that's useful yeah uh recording the headset super cool i've got a cat and dog and it's super fun just like at first so at first my dog barked at me because a stranger was in the house and then i used my voice and she recognized oh <laughs> it's me now she's good with it yeah. um but I love the little plus icon to steady your head if you want to. It's advisable to just do, you know, stationary captures. And it has a little plus icon to steady yourself, which I really like that kind of UI for that. I do wish they would add live photos for spatial photos. I right. also wish the default was a video capture because it can take some time to, like, eye over to the video and tap because I think I'll want to do more videos. And night mode with spatial photos would be great. Um, yes. Yeah. I think that's all computationally very intense. We'll see how that goes. Um, I've played around with the photos. They're they're fun. I've watched videos that I've captured with the iPhone, and uh, they turn out pretty good. Um, I'm impressed with the iPhone captures. I really am. Some of them are just stunning. Um, I, yeah. I, I captured a few live performances. Um, we were at a blues uh, restaurant um, with a stage, and we actually got the seat, like, for me – uh, maybe 10 feet away from the, the players and singer because we were kind of in a little, <laughs> this little like wall nook. I don't, I can't explain yeah. it, but like, it was this funny little thing that like, anyway, so we were very close to the stage and I was able to capture some um, 3d video of that and view it later in vision OS. And it was, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's really, it's really cool. Uh, so I recommend if you have an iPhone uh, 15 pro to get out there and just start, you know, with your pets uh, if you're out in the middle of a field and capture a landscape, it's going to do nothing because there's nothing to 3D yeah, you effect. You close, pretty close, mm-hmm. not too close. The iPhone will tell you if it's not and ten feet yeah, away it, it, with people yeah. is enough because the people in the foreground and the background will be separated. But yeah, once you get past that point, they're in the background more or less. But it's kind of surreal. I'll like capture a video of you know it's my daughter sleeping in my lap in a chair, and I sit down in that chair and kind of look at that. It, I, I'm in that moment again, <laughs> literally. Mm-hmm. Like, I do wish for the immersive spatial videos that there was a, an option to black out the surroundings from you as well. Because if I'm like, if you can see the pass through as well, so like if I'm looking at this thing and I'm slightly off, it like you see both, and that's a bit right. So if you're if you're viewing a spatial photo or video, what Tim's talking about is, uh, you can either just view it as a little glass window in front of you. So you're kind of peering through literally a, like a window outside. Um, and then there's a button in the top right corner you click that looks like a panoramic, but it's the um, immersive view. It'll actually give you a warning. If you're too shaky or too much movement in the video you've recorded, it'll say this might cause uh, spatial sickness if you're not, or motion sickness or whatever, if you're not careful, and you say, okay, do it anyway. And it expands to your field of view with some uh, white, glowy, like dreamlike texture yeah. around the film. And I agree with you. If that was black, I think it would be better than the white view. And then, of course, it being the video, the edges become fu- like that fuzzy, transparent material. And then you see the room around you. So watching those in immersive view is better. But again, I just feel like the UI around this needs some work. It, it, they could definitely make mm-hmm. this more immersive, more interesting. But it's super impressive. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, is it worth all the effort capturing this video from back in December? It's like, oh, yes, it was. This is great. I will probably do more of this in 4K captures uh, going forward. Um, 
Some general app thoughts. Jigspace is just wild. One of the most fun things outside of this, the models, is there's this feature where you just draw in your room. So you could have this little uh, street, like a yard that you just drag all around your room. And it's just it's just fun. Like, that's just a fun app. I'm not sure if you played around with that. I haven't played around with uh, Jigspace. I just... <laughs> time, man. I, yes, I know. I... Right? I want to do everything. Um, there's just so many cool experiences and there's still more coming. Uh, I will say there's so many apps missing. Like I look at my iPad and I'm like, and I, did you do the thing? I do this every time I get a new device and set up it as, as new. I went to the app store and went to my purchase history yes. and just went through and said, okay, what do I want to download? Absolutely. I have so few vision OS native apps in my purchase history. It's, and even it's kind the compatible of apps that were got enabled mm -hmm. PlayStation they don't enable their main PlayStation or PS Remote Play app, but you can download the PS Communities and all the apps they don't care about anymore. Sure, yeah. why not? There uh. is a... I haven't tried it yet, but I have it downloaded. There is a PlayStation... Let me yes, Mirror near Play. Yeah, and I've downloaded that to use, um, and it is a native Vision app. I've lost it's it. A, it's an iPad app. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's an iPad it, app. But yeah, I did the pairing process today. Mirror it, Play. That's yeah, it. quite honestly... I think I'll just stick with my PlayStation Portal, which has the haptics and all that. And I think, you know, Vision OS is not where I'll play my PS5. No, um, I I had a question before, and it has now been answered. Will I be able to wear Vision OS and look at a TV yeah. and, play, and play a video game? Kind of. <laughs> latency, yeah, yeah. latency-wise, it's fine. Uh, so less it's, vibrant of colors. Yes, yeah, so you're looking at a screen being recorded by a camera. So... It works, but if you're like me and care about every pixel and color and everything that you can get out of a video game, it is definitely the less ideal way to play a video game. So if I'm going to play with Vision OS on my head, it's going to be through something like Mirror Play. Or there's these HDMI adapters, I guess, that you yeah, can buy. Yeah, the encoder. I haven't tried it yet. I want to do that because that's like... You're no longer going over the internet. You're go you're going over like local internet, more right. or less, right? Because like Mirror Play, I, the way I understand like things like that, and PlayStation's Remote Play, PlayStation Five is sending this video signal through the router to the web, back down the router to your phone or whatever, right? Right. Uh, whereas something like an HDMI adapter would literally beam it straight to uh, the app uh, interface, right? So yeah. Uh, that should reduce any latency issues and be more like natively playing on Vision OS. And that's something I definitely want to try. Yeah, the one thing I always miss from remote play sessions is the haptics. So that's what I love PS4. Like that's one of my favorite parts of the PlayStation Five are that those haptics in Dual Sense and like, yeah, I, I think that yeah. I I wish Apple in general, just across iOS, iPad OS, would adapt haptics engines, yeah. which I I think developers can target. They just don't don't um they, yeah. yeah i think it's in the os like there's that ability but no one does it even sony with the remote play app yeah it's very odd to me but and they advertise so, pair the dual sense and but i have a feeling like it's a latency issue especially in remote play because sending the signal to vibrate on a controller is yet another place for things to fall apart yeah but they do in the ps portal so obviously oh. they figured it out uh steam decks i think have some rumble ability with some of the uh, hacks they have there um, another app I want to mention is MindNode. I tried this out. There's this fully immersive brainstorming session, uh, which lets you just put down ideas. You can drag the little nodes around and link them together. And then when you're done with that, you can export that to a new MindNode file, like a mind map, um, which is a which is just the flat version. So it's it's, it's an interesting idea. I kind of want a, a, a my node file that's fully immersive as well versus just the brainstorming session, but it's pretty cool. Um, I note about pass through. Uh, so I, my wife has a MacBook Air. I logged into my account there. Super cool having the Mac display nice and big. Kind of want my own laptop at some point. Maybe she'll upgrade at some point. Um, pretty neat how that works. Um, interesting that mice even attached to a Mac don't work in Vision OS. It's trackpad only as far as I can tell. Um, I haven't tried a Magic Mouse, but the third-party mouse that we had on that laptop was not working on Vision OS. So another thing I noticed is, is yeah, that that's one thing. Um, I would also just use a Magic Trackpad because it's probably the best implement. But uh, keyboards-wise and other Bluetooth objects like game controllers, it pops up and says 
this device will uh, could interrupt Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. If you have more than two. Uh, I actually get that just, I think, with just the keyboard, which is really weird. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I haven't gotten that yet. I've got a, a Logitech keyboard I'm paired to it with. I, I have two warning messages in my settings right now in Bluetooth. Let me pull it up. It's... Oh, I have the I have them disconnected because I have the Mac connected, so they're it's not there right now. But there's actually like the, it's the message you mentioned, which is you have two devices connected. This could be an issue, but I also get just by itself uh, this device. So it's like an unsupported device issue with my third party keyboard. But the keyboard does work. Yeah, and it seems to only pair to Apple audio things, so Beats and AirPods. You can't do any third party Bluetooth uh, speakers or receivers of audio i tried to like pair it to a bluetooth receiver to try to get audio output from the vision pro but that's not enabled it seems to be only apple's headphones which is interesting so um one thing i'm curious about is we've been wearing it a lot this weekend to kind of stress test it how are you feeling about doing eight hour work days in the headset you think this is what you thought it'd be and you'll be comfortable doing that a couple things it's not ready for an eight hour workday, not because of comfort, but because of software. Um, comfort wise, if I, so when I'm working, I don't always sit in front of the keys. Like I'm not button chair for eight hours, right? I take breaks, right. you know, I get up, I walk around, I'll go get a snack or something. If I do the same thing with vision pro, you know, every, every hour or two when I'm, especially when I'm like maybe feeling the weight a little bit or I'm feeling sore, or maybe a headache's coming on, stop what I'm doing, get up, go do what I need to do. Um, I feel like it could easily make it through an eight hour shift. I'm, I'm not getting any pain. I'm not getting any soreness when I take it. Like right now I feel it. The weight is there. It is definitely a, a weighty headset. It's on my head. It, I'm it's, that's not going away, but when I remove it, just like PSVR two, honestly, because I, I play Beat Saber a lot, so maybe I've conditioned my face to this. I don't know. Yes. Um, but like I take it off, and it's like a weight is literally lifted off of my head, and within five minutes, that like, you know, the sweat kind of evaporates off of your face, and you kind of because you're inside the headset and it's warm, uh, you kind of just feel like mm, okay, I'm good. And you, if you go, if I if you take it off and go look in the mirror, you have red marks around your face. Uh, <laughs> yes, you do. Um, so all that's true. Uh, wash your headband. My original often. persona had a mark on it. I never do another capture because there was a red mark from my. Uh, Honestly, <laughs> I think that's that's the go to. Actually, let's make a persona with just the Vision OS outline around our face. Um, <laughs> right. But yeah, like you could totally do that. Have it tight, t- nice and tight, and like the do a persona capture with that. It's really funny. No, but um, I would definitely say like m- multiple things here. Clean your uh the thing that touches your face. What is that called? The cushion. Um. Yeah. Clean that regularly because you don't want to ruin your skin. But otherwise, yeah, I think this is this is eight hour ready. I mean, ample breaks, you know, just like with screen time, you want to get up, you want to move around, uh, take it off, let your skin breathe, uh, wash your face regularly. But as far as using it for work, I can do drafts, thankfully now with the beta and it'll eventually release. I can get in Safari. I can do all of my work stuff that's Safari related. I don't have all of my apps. Photos doesn't even let you edit, but I do have Photomator and Darkroom. Um, Pixelmator, um, I think Affinity apps are not here yet. Uh, I, Affinity Designer is where I create a lot of images. So again, I can open my Mac. This is where it's getting interesting. I haven't tried it yet, but like I can do mm-hmm. anything the Vision Pro can't do right now. The Mac can be brought into this ecosystem and yeah and it's so it. funny like i'm an ipad guy but this vision pro may make me want to try to get some kind of mac laptop here yeah but the third problem is social i don't think instagram's here yet and other apps like it where if i need to manage my the apple insider instagram account or any of those things i'll have to take the headset off go to the ipad pro and use the native apps on there um and that's okay again i think that's a good thing, uh, at least now for managing it and not it not being on my head all day. But eventually it'll get to the point where all the apps that are on my iPad Pro or at least some version of them that do the same functionality will be in Vision OS. That's not the case today. So it artificially, because of that, it will limit my ability to work. And I think that's a good thing as we adjust to this new paradigm and it'll let me learn, like I said at the beginning of the show, what do I need to do to make Vision OS work for me the way I made iPad OS work for me? The way 
you transition from one operating system to the other. This is not an iPad. This is not a Mac. It's its own unique system and deserves to have its own unique workflow. And that's something we're going to have to be working on going forward. But to answer your question in very long-winded form, yes, this is an all-day device. You could definitely work from it. As long as you're comfortable, as long as you're not getting sick, you've got to take care of yourself. But yes, I think... Yeah, I, I feel... I get less eye strain in here than looking at like an iPhone or iPad for long periods of time. And I will go cross-eyed. <laughs> like if I'll be in front of my studio display with like my iPads open and sometimes like I, I'll just lose the ability to focus for like five minutes. That's just, you know, that's just eye strain. That's normal. Um, but yeah, like I, but I feel because the focal distance is longer here. Mm-hmm. That's a nicer on your eyes. I think so. I think yeah. this is, you know, long-term testing. We're entering unknown worlds here, but, uh, I believe that you're correct. I think the eye strain, like if I work eight hours in front of a studio display versus eight hours in a vision pro, will my eyes be more sore and tired from which one, which activity? And I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet the studio display because I think what's interesting here too is a limitation is also a gift because the lighting saturation color all that is consistent within the headset whereas in real life you go from looking at the real world to a screen to the real world your the consistency in lighting and dis and focal distances are different uh and make your eyes do more work as you adjust to looking at different displays and different distances and then look away from the display and now you're looking at a brightly lit room like what does that do to your eyes versus having similar contrast and similar lighting um inside the headset so yeah the one app I'd pay good money for here is just the iPad version of Ferry. Mm-hmm. I'm so sad that Canis is opting out for now. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of these more complex apps, I, I've noticed it's mostly the ones that attach to the file system. I think there's some weird things going on there. Uh, we'll see. I know the files app behaves pretty well in here. Yeah. Um, I think it's just the worry that this is a track, it'd be a trackpad heavy interface, mm-hmm. not good with eyes tracking. And he's probably worried about customer emails this doesn't work well with eyes and telling them to use the trackpad may not be satisfying for him as a developer yeah this is all early days so we'll we'll see where we are in a month i mean it's like i said most most of the developers that have opted out just didn't have a headset you know um or a lot of these guys are in europe i mean and they're in europe so they can't buy one easily um so we'll see a lot more apps in the coming weeks for sure yeah one of the final things um eyesight I'm pretty impressed with my persona and how it handles the external uh, display. How is it for you? Is it? I haven't. Have you gotten comments from people in the family? I haven't had much time to test eyesight because uh, I keep fiddling with my persona and I haven't had people around yeah. to like give me any feedback. So that's that's still something on my list of to dos. <laughs> if if you wear glasses in your persona, do the glasses appear in the thing? I don't know. I put a, I put glasses on my persona and these glasses are a terrible approximation of the glasses that I normally wear. Um, I yeah I don't think so because that wouldn't make sense, would it, to have a headset on? It, with glasses. it probably would not. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts? It's been a crazy couple days. Um, yeah, I know this is everything's a, been living up to your expectations. Uh, this is a longer show, so I don't want us to keep going too long. Um, yeah. I wish I could have my brain from before having Vision OS to examine how I felt uh, going in. From my perspective right now, I'm not overwhelmed. I'm not underwhelmed. Like I think I had my expectations set pretty well, pretty reasonably. As a PSVR user uh, coming into Vision OS, I kind of and watching the reviews, I kind of knew what to expect. I knew the downsides, so there wasn't a lot of room for, ah, uh, this isn't quite what I wanted because I already knew there was going to be limitations with light. I already knew there's going to be uh, limitations with paths, pass through. So I would definitely say I'm excited. I'm happy with my purchase and I I'm ready to see where this goes in the future. And if anything outside of just more existential, I think this is proof that not only is this the future of computing, this is going to be part of everyone's day to day within the next decade as the hardware gets smaller, more efficient, easier to wear. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, uh, I see that future, like the hardware is heavier now, but once they get lighter versions of this, like it's just mind blowing what, uh, just like spreading out, having like a swivel chair in an office is so much fun. Just having surrounded by windows. Mm-hmm. And like, it's great. I think we always knew that 
if anyone was going to kill the iPhone, it would be Apple. And uh, and I don't think, don't, don't get me wrong, I think we're always going to have a piece of glass that we hold in our hands, and it's probably going to be called an iPhone, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, maybe in our lifetimes. But pair that with the future Vision OS platform, and now you have, you probably have a physical object you hold in your hands, but only you can see it because you're wearing your, you know, Vision OS platform. And the paradigm, the interaction, the life blood of all these apps move to the headset away from the phone. You'll still probably have objects like a phone, like a MacBook, like an iPad that you interact with. But I think the primary mover will be the Vision OS platform. Not now, not with Vision OS, not not with Vision Pro version one, but I can see a future where this becomes the dominant platform and everything else becomes an accessory to it. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you for your time out uh, this busy weekend, Wes. Uh, your review is going up very soon over on appleinsider.com, uh, probably up by the time this gets posted to the audio feed here. Um, anything else, uh, any places you want to plug or any, anything else? Yeah, just uh, find me on Mastodon. If you uh, tag me on Twitter, I'll see the notification, I'll reply, but I'm not active there. Mastodon's the best way to get me. You can find my email at the top of every article that I write. Um, it's just Wes at appleinsider.com. You can send an email, comment, anything like that. Uh, let us know, you know, if you have any questions about Vision OS, uh, Apple Vision Pro, or have specific questions about use cases. What well, if, hey, if you want to know, like, a specific app is available, you can give us a shout out, we'll check it out for you. But, uh, I'm excited for this platform, and I hope you guys are too. Thank you, Wes. Really appreciate it. Yep. Well, that's my interview with Wes, all about our first 72 hours with the Apple Vision Pro. Make sure to check out Wes on Mastodon and to read his review on Apple Insider. The review is not up as I am editing this podcast, but is due up any moment now. If you want to support the podcast, you can do so over at visionpros.fm slash Patreon. By subscribing either to Patreon or Apple Podcasts, you can get episodes early. And my thanks to everyone that supports the podcast. By supporting this podcast, you will also get early access to the iPad Pros podcast. With that, thanks for listening. I'll talk to everyone again real soon. I don't like that personas don't have ears. I feel Me like either. I did not know. I mean, like, there's an image of an ear on the side of your head if you turn your head far enough. But like, yeah, it's like flattened out a bit. It like doesn't jut out of your head properly. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like if I if I if I see myself straight on, I'm like, yeah, okay, that looks like me. But like, any time I move more than a quarter inch in either direction, it's like, like I said, like the cheek geometry doesn't make sense. And it's definitely making me look much heavier than I am. Like, I don't have a lot of fat in my face. Right. But it's definitely, like, puffing me out more. I don't know if I need to try to redo the persona in a different lighting condition or not. Yeah. I kind of like... I, like... I wish I had more of a forehead, or less of a forehead with the hair, but uh, overall... <laughs> I mean, uh, you look little... really good. Like, from the images I've seen of you, like, in your, like, it's, iMessage... It's pretty, pretty spot on. Like, I'm... Like, I'm, even... I'm I don't think the my eyes are the weirdest part. Yeah, like I just think like how it looks. Yeah, the geometry of my head is wrong, but like my features are correct. My mustache, my beard, eyebrows, all of that's really accurately represented. My eyes. Right. I mean, I know my eyes are funky. Like this is one of those things where, like, if you're not comfortable with the way you look, if you hate looking in mirrors, or if you're like very self conscious about the way you look, I feel like personas are going to be a nightmare for you. Yes. Uh, like, so, because th- this this definitely highlights anything that's, oh, I cannot, <laughs> I'm talking with my hands and I'm activating things. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs>